$10,000, $30,000. There's so many different proposals and updates on the student loan forgiveness. And it's kind of getting hard to figure out like, you know, which one is which, uh, have they passed, have they not? Because some things have passed, some things are simply proposals. So in this video, we're gonna talk about every single thing. We're gonna break it down, what you need to know about student loan forgiveness, what's passed already, what are actually proposals, and in the proposals, what are those details that you really need to know? Because while a lot of people are posting videos online about all these student loan forgiveness programs, a lot of people are overlooking some of the fine details. So we're gonna be talking about everything you need to know in fine detail, and let's kind of walk through that. But before we get started, if this is your first time to this channel, uh, welcome. If you are into personal finance, like saving money, investing in real estate, stocks, entrepreneurship, basically becoming a creator of your future instead of a manager of life's events, then this channel is probably for you. So I'd highly recommend that maybe you check out some of my videos if you can. And also, if you have been watching these videos, smash that like button for me, hit the subscribe ch uh, channel button, little notification bell would be greatly appreciated. Let's hop into it. So the newest proposal, so this is a proposal that's being pushed right now uh, by the Democratic Party is the HEROES Act. Now the HEROES Act has a lot of different components to it and different angles to help people out. But the one we're gonna be talking about today is about the student loan forgiveness portion of this HEROES Act. Now it encompasses two types of things. It encompasses public student loans and also private student loans. So we're gonna kind of dive into both of those. But we have to understand the framework that this is actually built off of, which is known as the CARES Act. So we're gonna talk about the CARES Act really briefly. That way we kind of understand the foundational pieces. Then we're gonna move into the HEROES Act, like I said, which is gonna be the newest updates. So for those of you who are unfamiliar with the CARES Act, what it was is a bill that was actually passed. So the CARES Act was an act that was actually passed a while back. And it's those things that allowed you to have the $1,200 stimulus check. It's what provided a $600 federal unemployment benefit on top of your state unemployment benefit. It's the same thing that allowed an, a 13 week extension to uh, unemployment benefits. It also provided other assistance like the PUA, which gave unemployment benefits to those who normally do not get unemployment. So we're talking like 1099 contract, independent contractors, self-employed people, you know, business owners like that. But it did also have a provision for student loans. Now here's the thing. It did not grant student loan forgiveness. What it did do though, was it created a student loan payment pause. So let's talk about that for a second. So the student loan payment pause, part of the CARES Act stated that no more student payments would need to be made from now until September 30th, 2020. So there would be no increase in like the principal, so you wouldn't have to pay the principal of your student loans, and no more interest would be accruing on student loan payments until September 30th, 2020. Other great benefits is that it's not gonna affect your credit score, so it's not like by not paying, all of a sudden you're taking a hit on your credit, and also you cannot have involuntary collections on non-payments. So your student loan company can't come to you and be like, oh, you haven't been paying, we sent it to collections. It's a true pause on student loan payments and interest and all that. So it basically freezes where you are at. Here's the thing though, not all federal student loans qualify under the CARES Act. The ones that do are direct federal uh, student loans and also fell student loans. But you know, student loans like Perkins Federal Student Loans, which are usually issued directly through the university, those are not part of payment pause. So like I said, I highly recommend that you check your student loan and make sure that you are under the payment pause. Okay, so now that we know some of the basic framework of the CARES Act, we can dive further into detail about the HEROES Act, which is the newest proposal being pushed by the Democratic Party to basically further help and aid during this crisis. So the basic construct of the HEROES Act is that they want to really extend some of that framework of the CARES Act and really help it apply to more people. So under the basic premise is that with the HEROES Act, if it were to be passed, the proposal states that the student, federal student loans that did not qualify under the CARES Act would now qualify. So basically all student loans would be out of freeze currently until September 30th, uh, 2020. Another interesting point on the HEROES Act is that they're gonna have retroactive payments. So if the HEROES Act were to be passed and now your student loans are part of the 
uh, payment freeze. Any payments that you made during uh, the beginning of the CARES Act up until finally when your uh, student loan was eligible, you would be refunded all of those payments. Under the HEROES Act, another provision is that they are going to extend the rent pause for another year up until September of 2021. In addition to the extension of one year payment pause, there is going to be a transition period that says if for some reason, once September uh, 30th, 2021 hits, within 30 days, if you fail to make a payment for whatever reason, there would be a forgiveness on that so you would not have your credit score hurt it wouldn't count against you the other interesting part about this is that they have another clause that states that no interest would accrue on your loans until at least September 2021 or at least two months after the unemployment begins to recover and they have this like kind of really crazy formula that they calculate to, to determine like when does that actual recovery period start but it would basically be the latter of the two so if we if the economy starts to recover, unemployment starts to recover well before September 30th, 2021, then basically no interest would accrue until September 30th, 2021. But if we get to September 30th, 2021, and unemployment is still really high, it hasn't showed signs of recovery yet, it would not start until two months after recovery period started. It also proposes to consolidate non-direct loans into direct loans. This is a really important thing to understand because if your non-direct loan transitioned into a direct loan, all the payments that you had and were making before this period would actually count towards public service uh, forgiveness. So this is really, really big. So if you're part of those public service forgiveness things after 120 qualifying payments where your student loans are forgiven, with this new proposal, once those non-direct loans transition into direct loans, all those previous payments would already be counted into your new loan moving forward. Because right now, without the HEROES Act, the way it's set up is in order to qualify for these types of things, you do have to transition your non-direct loan and consolidate into a direct loan, but all those payments that you've been making would not count and you'd have to start fresh from the consolidation period for another 120 qualifying payments. So that's a really big thing, especially for people who are gonna be eligible for public student loan forgiveness. Okay, so let's talk about the federal student loan forgiveness or federal loans, because that's one of the big things about the HEROES Act. For all of you that have federal student loans, um, the, one of the big proposals with the HEROES Act is that they're gonna forgive $10,000 of your student loans. And with that $10,000, some of the big points about this is that it's not gonna be considered taxable income. So if you don't know that much about student loan forgiveness or the way some of these things typically work, sometimes when student loans are forgiven, it counts as earned income. So even though uh, you know you don't have the student loan payment, that money that you receive is forgiven, goes on to your taxes and you do have to pay taxes to the IRS based on that. But with this HEROES Act, the $10,000 student loan forgiveness would not count as earned income. So it's completely tax free. Okay, so what about private student loans? Because this is where it gets a little bit trickier. Because if you have a federal student loan, it's pretty easy for the government to just go ahead and just kind of like erase uh, that $10,000 off of your student loans and just say, hey, it's been forgiven, don't even worry about it. But when it's a private student loan, you actually owe a company, you don't owe the actual government. So with private student loans, it works a little bit differently. And this is how it's gonna work with the HEROES Act if it gets passed. So with private student loans, instead of the government just erasing $10,000 off your student loan bill, what they're gonna do instead is actually make payments on your behalf towards your student loans up to $10,000 until September 30th, 2021. And then after September 30th, 2021, any unused portion of the $10,000 will get reverted back to your student loan balance. Some really awesome news about this is that it actually will count towards your credit score. So because the government is making payments on your behalf, this is actually going to positively affect your credit. The other thing that you need to understand too is that interest will not be capitalized until September of 2021 as well. Okay, so now that we've kind of talked a little bit about the actual fine details of this HEROES Act, we kind of got to talk about like, how likely is this actually going to be passed? Because as you know, and you've probably been seeing online, is that a lot of proposals are going around um, and there's a big push on the Democratic side to get these things going, but there's also a lot of 
resistance on the Republican side. And part of that is, is that Republicans and their kind of mindset is that, hey, we're really trying to push the economy to go back up. And so people and the economy ones, as we open up, will get their jobs back and we shouldn't have to worry about this too much longer. But, you know, in my opinion, too, it's like even if we do start to open the economy back up and it remains safe to do so, yes, some people will get their jobs back. But there's a lot of people who aren't going to be getting their jobs back um, because some people have permanently lost their jobs. They're going to have to figure out how to find a new job. So there may be a very long transition period even after the, our economy opens back up. So. For these types of people, you know, it could be very difficult for them to start making those student loan payments. So one of the things that I kind of think may happen is you're going to have this huge feud kind of between the, you know, the Democratic side, the Republican side. Obviously, the Democratic side wants to have all these things instilled, uh, but you're going to have the Republican side that is really going to fight this type of a thing. So I'm sure there'll be some back and forth. Hopefully, they find some sort of mutual agreement. But I want to kind of hear what you think about all this. Like, do you think it's actually going to get passed? In my opinion. I don't think it's going to get fully passed in this regard. I'm hoping that they kind of find some happy medium and that, you know, the Republican side will kind of maybe push back some of the student loan forgiveness or at least have a partial student loan forgiveness or at least create some sort of like, you know, parameters so some people actually can get those student loans either forgiven or kind of further push back on student loan payments to help people transition out of this period. Because even if you get your job back here tomorrow, a lot of people have been hurting financially and it's gonna be really hard to just catch up with everything. You know, rent, groceries, food, bills that some people have been having to push off. Not to mention all the accruing student loan bills they're gonna have to start paying again. So what is your thoughts on that? I want to hear below. Comment below what you think. If this video provided value for you, uh, please like this video, subscribe to this channel, hit that little notification bell. It would really mean the world to me. But until then, I hope you stay safe. Um, you know, spend as much time you can with your family. Be safe, be well. And I will continue to update you with as many videos as I can regarding this, regarding these proposals, these bills. And in addition to that, how to begin building wealth and really taking control of that future and building the life of your dreams.